All right. We are, it's really hard to sum up, first of all, all these looks into one look per decade that you guys are going to choose. But we're going to still give it a, a, our best shot. We're going to begin with the 80s. Susie, what was your top 80s look for Madge? You guys, good morning. Hi, Lisa. Like a virgin, absolutely for me, was uh, that sort of shot heard around the world. This was her second studio album, and she performed. She opened the first ever MTV VMAs with the performance, wearing the boy toy belt, the lace, the wedding dress, the gloves, the stacks of jewelry. jewelry. And you know what? We see her as this kind of pop provocateur, right? The next day, she was told she'd never work again. Uh, now we see that there was this immense kind of attitude around sort of punk, right? Very unapologetic in how she put herself out there and what an immense impact that she had from the stage to the street. We were all doing it. We can thank, stylists can thank Madonna for putting us on the map because typically before then people were going to fashion designers and houses for their looks. She hired a stylist collated this look from kind of thrift shops and Lisa, Tara, I don't know about you, but all of a sudden we we're like, we can do this. We can dress like this. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, nobody will forget that performance. What an iconic performance at the MTV Awards. Uh, Lisa, you're going to take us back to 1983 next for your favorite mm. Madonna's lo Madonna look from the 80s? Yeah, so Lucky Star, um, it, it was released and it yeah. didn't really get that much heat and then Madonna had her video and they decided to play this video, you know, over and over. This Lucky Star look became synonymous with the Madonna style and the Madonna wannabes, as some of us may have been. Um, this is the one I remember <laughs> on the streets, right? like, everywhere is, in the 80s. Yeah. This is, I think, first of all, it was so accessible. It was that thrift store chic. She sort of like cobbled together this look. Um, and it was the crop top. It was the that, netted crop top. Right. Um, it was <laughs> the stacks of like sort of eclectic plastic jewelry. Yes. Uh, thanks to her, I wore gummies <laughs> up to my elbow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this was such an iconic look. Then I also think it was really interesting because it was sort of like sweet but also sexy. Mm -hmm. So I think it was really uh, speaking to that tween girl and mm -hmm. it became really something interesting for all of us to sort of toy around with and play around with. And then I also think it was for everyone, right? Like everyone could sort of get in on it. And I think that made her look really accessible, very mm -hmm. um, inspiring to mm -hmm. a lot of people. And then plus I have a soft spot in my heart for this song because my son's nickname is Lucky. So it was based on, you know, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and now it's actually a lullaby in my house. So I, I love this song and I love this look. It truly is that 80s quintessential Madonna almost costume at this point because it's so Madonna. Yep. All right. We're going to get back into our time machine. We're going to move forward a decade. Susie, give us your best look for the 90s. Oh, late 90s. Ray of light for me was so amazing because it was this it was perfect for street style for us. People on the left on that album cover, they thought that she was wearing sort of this liquid satin blouse much not unlike yours that you're wearing today, Carolyn. This was actually a vinyl trench coat from Dolce & Gabbana on the right. Who wasn't running out and buying a denim jacket after this look dropped? You know, like I said, ultimate late 90s street style. The album was critically well, very well received. It's kind of electronica, a little pop, but now she's 39. She's a mom. Uh, she's telling us that she doesn't train and work out. She just studies and practices yoga. She's into Kabbalah. So she's giving us this, this kind of wellness protocol that don't forget really impacted us in the everyday street style world. So there's not a lot of friction to her look. For us, it's very wearable, but she is undeniably now the den mother of cool. All right. Uh, meantime, uh, when we look back to the 90s, Lisa, you're going to take us back to the Blonde Ambition Tour. Yes. Mm. Okay. So to me, this was, I mean, first of all, this is the concert. That whole tour actually shot Madonna into superstardom. So she was a pop star, and then this whole tour was beyond. It really, really set her apart. Um, in terms of the outfit, this was a collaboration with Jean-Paul Gaultier. Um, they worked together a lot. He, initially, they actually uh, worked on her outfit for the premiere of Desperately Seeking Susan. And then this look, to me, was Madonna recognizing the power that she had, um, owning it, uh, not only that, playing with it. So typically, when you think of corsetry, a, you know, in traditional way, it's it's constricting, it's you know confining. Here she is. She's she's wearing it. Not only is she wearing it, she's wearing it with a power suit uh, for express yourself. She has this sort of conical shape, which almost makes it like 
weapon-like, mm -hmm. and it really turns that whole idea of gender and typical sort of outfits and silhouettes on its head, which I thought was really interesting. She did it unapologetically, unabashedly. I mean, and then you see it in Truth or Dare, which is a movie that I had on heavy rotation in my life. <laughs> um, you know, this was such a, an iconic moment for her because it truly turned her into an icon and an icon who could say yeah. stuff about the what she was earning, the power that she had, the fact mm -hmm. that she was not going to be um, put into any role in terms of gender, in terms of her ability, and in terms of what she was capable of. And I love that that collaboration was so important to the two of them. Jean-Paul Gaultier said that it was actually the only woman he ever proposed to was Madonna, no. and three times. And she obviously said no, but they were very good friends and collaborated. And I just love that we're seeing that power. She's owning it. And that obviously carries through. Uh, her career. Power in so many ways, because I remember going to that concert and her physical strength kind of blew you right. away. That's when she w came out on the stage and it was, and I, her muscles, yeah. I, I just, <laughs> wow, you know, she was in charge in every which way. And interestingly, the hairstyle, because that was also that sort of top ponytail also became synonymous with that tour and with that outfit, interestingly, it was about the actual physical performance. So that hairstyle was so that the hair didn't get in the way of that that microphone that she wore so she could dance and move, right. which she so did. I mean, it mm -hmm. truly was a performance and a show top to bottom. All right. Uh, jumping back in the machine, we're moving ahead a decade to the 2000s. All right, Susie, you're up. Hung up, confessions on a dance floor. Who didn't want to wear fishnets and leotards and jetted jackets, the Farrah Fawcett <laughs> hair? Unbelievable. Now, you know what? Like Lisa said, all of a sudden there's this woman who is continuing to challenge our notions of codes, gender, religion. She had, you know, she was celebrating the gay community, politics, sex, all of it. And she was so unabashed. The thigh high or the knee high boots, the bright purple, her entire look styled for this tour was absolutely off the charts. Very reminiscent of sort of like David Bowie, early 70s, Ziggy Stardust in this notion that you can change your identity. You can be this cultural shapeshifter and push the needle forward in whatever way you want. Like Lisa said, before there was Taylor, before there was Beyonce, Madonna was in charge of her music. Madonna was in control of her image, and we loved it. And, you know, TV girls on the red carpet were like, can we have some fair hair? Like, it did trickle down to the street a little bit. <laughs> 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 All right, Lisa, what do you got for us when it comes to the 2000s? Okay, so 2000s, I think this is a bit of an unexpected one, but when you sort of look through the canon of style for Madonna, as Susie said, you know, she was sort of the shapeshifter, and we saw her come into her own a little bit as a wife with her Mrs. Ritchie outfit. So this was at the premiere of Snatch, and she had just married Guy Ritchie a few months before, and it was a really, really like tight-lipped, button-down uh, ceremony. So this was sort of her stepping out in this bridal white with Mrs. Ritchie on the back. I thought this was so interesting. First of all, this is a woman who, throughout her career up until then, was always all about Madonna. And here mm -hmm. she's saying, okay, yes, I might steal the limelight a little bit, but please pay attention to this talent, who also happens to be my husband, I'm a partner, I'm showing up, and I want you to notice what he has done. I also thought it was interesting that it was written in rhinestones, which is a reference to the actual storyline in Snatch. But I just thought this was a moment where Madonna was saying she can be all the things. And mm -hmm. I think she said that throughout every outfit and every look and every sort of metamorphosis yeah. is she can be all the things and she's still Madonna. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, the term shapeshifter is, is so dead on, uh, as partic particular as we move to the 2010s, Susie. And right. she became the first to, to do this on a red carpet. <laughs> At 55 years old, this is 2014. This was the Grammy Awards, of course. She showed up twinning with her son, David Banda, with the cane. She had just had an injury. I believe on horseback, but there is that grill, which was the shot heard around the world. The hip hop community took offense to this, some members saying it was cultural appropriation. She, of course, smacked back and clapped back in true Madonna fashion, saying she wasn't going to apologize. This was the night that Pharrell wore his uh, Vivian Westwood vintage, almost mounty style hat. So it became the hat versus the grill. And the next day, Pharrell said, you know what? My look was way more fashion. He literally took her on. And again, Madonna said, no, you know what? I'm the queen. Step aside, everybody. But we see her starting to age. We also see, see this continuation of 
the dimensionality of her brand. You know, you know, when Lisa was talking about the Mrs. Ritchie suit, every woman, you know, so many women and, and grooms, whoever these days are wearing bride and I'm with the fashion pack and all think about the impact on that matching juicy couture sweatshirts with her sweatsuits with with lettering across the back. Madonna started all that with Mrs. R Ritchie and that debut on that red carpet. Were we all wearing grills the day after that Grammy Awards? No, but do we remember it? Are we talking about it? 100%. Mm -hmm. All right, and speaking of memorable, finally, you've got to Madonna at the Met in 2016. I do, so this Givenchy number was her pushing the boundaries once again. And while I don't know if it started out as a political statement, it definitely ended up being one. She had you know, lots of skin exposed, wrapped up in a reference to kinesiology tape uh, that she wears when she's dancing. And you know what, it really was interesting because it's Madonna the person and also Madonna the machine, which is that whole factory that is around her career. So I thought this was really interesting. And then also she came out and said, this is a political statement because she got a lot of haters that came out with this outfit. She said it's about ageism, it's about sexism, and I love that Madonna, no matter what age, is pushing those boundaries and really giving us permission to be exactly who we are. All right, looking at the icon through the decades in our fashion microscope. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Lisa. All right, so let's talk about this era, the Like a Virgin era. Like a Virgin, material goal. It was the 80s, the early 80s, and we all know she was iconic for her style and her beauty influence. And that was a time to have fun. We're talking the blue eyeliner, the mm -hmm. pink lipstick. Um, you know, it was a time to be bold and unabashedly, and also in contrast to the Like a Virgin, that white, sweet girl, you know, there was a little bit of edge. You know, yeah, so there was a little bit of edge, and that came with the makeup and hair and the, that all tied in together. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're going to show us how yeah. to do that this morning? Really quickly. So I'm using yeah. the Estee Lauder Pure Color Envy lipstick. It's a matte finish, long wear. You want to choose a punchy pink. This is called Powerful, super moisturizing. It's got all kinds of oils. It makes your lips not look dry, but it gives you that long wear. And again, 80s was all about, there was a lot of pink, right? So mm -hmm. if you don't want to go with a separate blush, the easiest way to carry this through and you're gonna do a much more careful job when you do this at home. You just blot it on the cheeks, it's the easiest way. And we all know the 80s weren't shy. Nobody, is, including Madonna, was shy about the blush, right? So you can right. put that high up, blend that into your cheeks with your finger. It's a super easy way alternative to powder blush and also when you don't have a lot of time and you wanna just make it all monochromatic go together. But this is just a big part of the 80s. And then, really quickly, the liner. So I'm yep. using the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Eyeliner. Chin down and look up. This is safe for the waterline, ophthalmologist tested. I love Makeup Forever because, I mean, it's good for synchronized swimmers. It's good enough for us, for Madonna, right? So you can perform in this if you're performing. You can go out, you can, if you're trick-or-treating like the way I look today. But Makeup Forever uh, really does a good job. Sensitive eyes, even, contact lens wears. You want to add the blue. See, immediately adds drama, gives you 80s, yeah. close your eyes. And then on top of the black, Madonna had a lot of black at this time. But look how pigmented. Glides on, and turn your head this way. Really easy. And you can make a mess with this. The 80s was not about precision. You know, it was all about fun. So we're gonna add that on. And the last but not least, brow gel. So the next, uh, uh, the brow glue is my pick. You're just gonna fluff them up. Big brows, that was huge. Big hair on top of your head and on your <laughs> eyebrows, guys. So this dries fl flake free. It feels a little tacky at first, but then it dries flake free. You can uh, brush it in the opposite direction if you want a really wild and go for it. Look at this. All right. And this yeah. is transparent. So those colors big in the 80s, also big in 2023, thanks to another icon, Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Exactly. We're in our Madonna Barbie girl era, yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, move it on next yeah. to uh, we're moving to the 90s. The 90s, it's yes. kind of chronological. I'm kind of rocking the look. At that time, it was all about uh, Take a Bow. She actually used that as an audition for Evita for the director. Mm -hmm. That whole look was more serious. She wanted to be taken seriously as an actor, as well as a performer, and as a person. She kind of like calmed down a little bit, less girly. Typical red lipstick. This is the same Pure Color Envy lipstick. And the Kat Von D Tattoo Black Eyeliner is my pick. That bold black eyeliner, which I'm rocking, lashes. It was kind of like classic, whether it was like old Hollywood 50s. It was, it's a timeless look that's still relevant today. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of her look then. And she would wear the black, you know, the, the fishnet. You remember the net sure. over, her, over her eye? And that was just kind of like a, a beauty look, which I love. That's probably okay. my favorite. 
because I right. like to rock that every day. Coming up next, the 2000s. Yeah. Madonna went a little more minimalistic then, Christine? She, she calmed down a little bit in some ways. Um, mm -hmm. And it, with her makeup, it was more about the clean eyelid. She had false lashes. I love the velour do-it-yourself lash extensions. This is a great way to add that separated lash look. Again, she, she did the red lip or she did a nude lip. So I picked Muse. That's a really nice color from this uh, lipstick from Estee Lauder. But anyway, she, she paired a very beautiful open-eyed look with, and it's a much more modern look. So my tip is, if you're gonna rock any of Madonna's looks, don't have to do it in costume, although it is fun. <laughs> You'll get a lot of uh, looks. Yeah. You just wanna pick one item. Do just the blue eyeliner or just the pink lip or maybe the fluffy brows. You don't have to do it all if you're not trick-or-treating like. That way you can mix it into your daily look a little bit. Yeah, and you yeah. can modernize it. You can adjust it. You don't have to do literally everything she did, but I'm having a little fun with it today. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. I think our uh, time machine has come to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, look back at all the looks uh, fashion-wise and beauty-wise yeah. of Madonna as she celebrates her 65th birthday. Amy, thank you so much for coming in and being our model. Thank you. <laughs>